Hi, so in video one of this series, what we did was we um, talked about, in general, making pottery where you wouldn't need a kiln. This video is about the specific recipe of it. Now, we're going to use a clay. In other videos, I've gone down to my hillside and dug out the clay and prepared it. And if you want to do that, then there's a video on how to do that. Now, obviously, not everybody lives near a clay source and not everybody can get to a clay source. So you need another source of clay. Now, you could always just order clay. But it's really, really easy to go down and get a bag of this stuff. This is cat litter. Now, when that idea struck me, I was under the impression that cat litter was bentonite, which is a kind of clay. Uh, and yes, some cat litter is. But I now know far more about cat litter than I ever wanted to know. And there's a whole range of cat litters. So the non-clumping, lightweight cat litters actually tend to be chalk and quartz, sand. So you don't want those. You want a clumping litter. So if you spot a clumping cat litter, that's going to be clay. If you're lucky, it'll say clay on it, which is exactly what you want. If it doesn't say either, then you're probably best off just looking for one that either says clumping or clay. If you get one of the other ones, you have a possibility of getting um, chalk mixed with quartz. Uh, there's another one which is a silicon, as a silicate actually, I think. Uh, and then there's another one which is just um, wood chipped together. So there's a whole range of them and you want the clay one. Now what I've got here is 600 grams of that clay cat litter. And because it's nice and dry, I know it's 600 grams. What I need to do is add a proportion of this stuff, sodium silicate. You can buy this as a liquid, you can buy it as a powder. I get sodium metasilicate as a powder and I make it up into a 40% solution. That's 40% by weight. This one has 120 grams of sodium uh, silicate in it and actually 500 milliliters. But if this is 600 and that's 120, then we know what percentage that we're adding in here. So we need to add that percentage. Now this will absorb water like mad, which is why this is in 500 milliliters. And all you do is pour that water over there and just let the clay absorb it. So we're just going to leave that for a while now while the clay absorbs all that moisture and the sodium silicate gets surrounding it. Okay, so now you've done that, you end up with this. Now, the, you can get this cheaper than I paid. I mean, that was actually pretty cheap, but you can get it cheaper. But the cheaper versions have quite a lot of stones in them. This has a few stones in it, and I've been through that with my hands picking out the stones, which is a not too terrible a job. If you want to filter it through, you'd have to make it more liquid and then dry it, but you could always just filter it. So if you buy the cheaper stuff, though, most of it will be stone, and, and that'll be quite disappointing. So you want a mid-range-ish one. Now, it's this colour because the clay is really cheap. If you get the bentonite clay, you'll get a lighter grey colour. And you can just look at the packet to see what colour the clay is going to be, because it's going to be a little darker than the colour of the packet. Anyway, we've now got our basic material. And what we want to do is add some of this, which is the magnesium oxide. And you basically just sprinkle that stuff on and knead it in until you've got a thick paste. Obviously, I'm wearing gloves because this gets really sticky and messy. There probably are better ways of doing this, but I basically just get my hands in there because I like the feeling of clay. Okay, so we've added 500 grams of magnesium oxide. So just to reiterate that recipe, 600 grams, grams of cat litter, which is 600 grams of clay, 120 grams of sodium silicate and 500 grams of magnesium oxide. Now, this stuff actually is much more like dough, bread dough, than anything else. And you use the magnesium oxide now like you would use flour. You'll notice I've got it on an MDF board, and that's because the board is slightly um, absorbent on the surface, and so this now won't stick to it. So we can knead that and keep kneading it until we've got an even distribution throughout. And you can just see it by looking that everything has now been nicely mixed. Once it's at that stage, this is actually ready to use. So obviously we store that in a plastic bag, because we don't want it to air dry. Put it into a plastic bag, it'll keep for ages, I think. Um, <coughs> I'm going to mould something out of this now and cook it. So now it's time for me to make a little bit of art, I suppose. I've always liked doing arty things, actually. Now I'm going to do a little face. It can't be too big because it's going into the kiln. So I've cut a little bit of pipe there, and that's going to be the shape of the face. And then a bit of plastic on it so I can actually get it out of that. And now I'm just going to build a half bust, so to speak. Okay, so there's my effort at a quick mask. All we have to do is cook that now at 180 degrees. Okay, so there it is after it's had an hour in the oven. 
I was going to give it half an hour, but in the end I gave it an hour. And uh, actually, I think it's pretty good. It's nice and hard, certainly, and it's kept its shape, which is pretty cool. Okay, this only occurred to me actually after I did this, but I wanted to talk about this material some more that we actually made. Because it's not only that this material can be, let's say, cured as opposed to fired in a household oven, but we got that um, sculpture out and it was rock hard. It was a geopolymer and not a clay. But we put it in there wet. Now, I'm not a potter, but my understanding of pottery is what you do, basically, you make the thing out of wet clay. Then you leave it to go to a stage called leather hard, when you can carve up any of the bits you want. And then you have to leave it to a stage to go dry. And it has to be dry. When you put it in the kiln, if you've got that drying wrong, all you come back to is a kiln full of exploded pots. Now, we took this wet clay and we stuck it in an oven. So when it came out of that oven, it was bone dry and still had the same shape that it went in there. So this would probably work as a really good stabilising agent for making everyday normal pots. You could make normal pots out of this stuff. And instead of having that risk at the drying stage, you pop it in the oven, make sure it's bone dry, then put it in the kiln and fire it, and you should have a lot less losses to almost zero losses from your firings because you know your clay has gone in dry. Now that clay that we put in was a pretty chunky solid lump. So, as I say, I'm not a potter, but I think we may have discovered a way of stabilising clays against explosion when they come to the firing stage. And if anybody's out there is a potter and fancies giving this a go and, and seeing whether that's right or not, I'd really be fascinated to know the results. But anyway, I thought I'd share that observation with you because um, my guess is a lot of people who watch this channel are equally not potters and it may well escape everybody's notice. It certainly did mine until I started thinking about it a little bit. Okay, I'm quite pleased with that actually on a couple of levels. One, I, I quite like the design, I think it's kind of cute. And the other, that the modelling material worked so well. So, stunningly easy to make from cat litter. And like I say, I don't think that's the world's greatest bit of art, but it certainly qualifies in my mind as art. So we've gone from cat litter to art, and we've done that by using 600 grams of cat litter, um, 120 grams of sodium silicate, 600 grams of magnesium oxide. And if you follow those through, you'll be able to make the same modelling material. And it, it's really quite hard, but remember, it is a geopolymer. So it's, it's not actually a vitrified clay, but it's hard, it's durable, and would certainly paint up our varnish and be able to make a ton of things from. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.